Well, we've reached the point where we're ready to deploy our little application to the web. There are a number of different hosting options available, but by far the easiest are services like Heroku that operate in the cloud. These are known as platforms as a service, which provide everything we need to host an application, such as the servers, operating systems, and databases. In other words, we just need to provide our Flask application while they provide the rest. There are a number of these services, but we'll utilize Heroku since they have a free service level. Now, there are a few things we need to do first before we can just hand over our app to them. And let's turn to the Heroku guide for help. So let's start with the prerequisites. So yes, we have basic Python knowledge. We also have Python installed and make sure that your virtual ENV is activated. We also have PIP. And if you don't have a Heroku account already, be sure to sign up for one now. Next, you wanna go ahead and install the Heroku tool belt for your specific operating system. And this is a command line tool used to create and manage applications on Heroku. So just go ahead and take a minute to do that. Now we wanna go ahead and log in to Heroku from the command line. And the command for that is just Heroku login. And so the first time you run this command, you'll be prompted for your Heroku credentials. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter them. And then once you're authenticated, an SSH key will be created and sent to Heroku, which will automatically authenticate you whenever you communicate with them again. So you will only need to enter your login credentials once. Okay, so going back to the guide, we already have our Flask app set up so we can skip this step. We have virtual ENV set up and activated and we have Flask installed. We do need to install G-Unicorn and G-Unicorn is a web server that works really well with Flask and we can do that directly from pip. So pip install G-Unicorn. I actually already had it installed. Let me just go ahead and make sure I have the latest version by using the flag upgrade. Cool. Now you can test out your application locally with G-Unicorn instead of using just the regular development server. So to do that, you can just type in G-Unicorn. So dash B is an option that you can use to bind an app to an address. So in this case, we're gonna bind the app to localhost. Localhost is equal to 127.0.0.1. And then we'll go ahead and use, let's say port 4000. Then we need to specify the project and app name. And those are both the same in this case. Now it's not gonna give us the nice little feedback that our development server does, but this should be running. So let's just go ahead and test this out. So if we go to localhost 4000, and there's our application. And then you can hit Control C as usual to kill the server. Okay, back to the guide. So all this has been set up. Okay, next we need to set up a proc file. And Heroku uses this file for determining how to execute our application. So let's go ahead and create the file. And it's just proc file, no extension. And this is just gonna be created in our uh, root directory. Let's go ahead and open up Sublime. And the syntax for the, the proc file is simple. So each line contains a different command, starting with the name of the command, followed by a colon, and then the actual command. So in this case, the name of the command is web. And when Heroku sees this, it expects that the command will launch the web server. So we can use the same command that we used just a second ago, so g unicorn. And we don't wanna enter the option for binding the app to a specific address because Heroku will actually configure that for us. So Heroku will pick the address and the, and the port that it wants to use. And then let's just app, app, go ahead and save that. 
And we know that this works because we've already tested it out. You can validate your proc file, like the syntax of it, by using Foreman, which was installed with the Heroku tool belt. So we can do Foreman check. So this means it found the proc file, detected the command web, and that the command is valid. And we can also test the gunicorn server again. So with this command, foreman start. So, and of course we can, it has all the functionality here as you'd expect. Okay, so back to the guide here. We got the proc file set up. Okay, so now we need to specify dependencies with pip. So we can do this by providing a requirements.txt file that Heroku will use to install our dependencies with. We can create this file and add the dependencies using a command called pip freeze. And it's just this command here. So pip freeze greater than symbol and then requirements.txt. We can kill the server there. And so this command will either create a requirements file or update one if one has already been created. And you can also run just pip freeze to see the dependencies installed within your virtual env. So pip freeze, you can see we have flask, you can see there's Jenja 2, and there's a couple other things going on here, but you can also see gunicorn, which we just installed. Okay, so now we want to store our app on Git. So what that means is we want to add our project to a local Git repository. So Git was installed with the Heroku tool belt, if you didn't already have it. And if you're unfamiliar with Git and how version control systems work in general, check out the official Git site here. There's git-scm.com. And I believe SCM stands for source control management or source config management, something like that. It doesn't matter, but git-scm.com. So before we actually create our local repository, we need to add a .gitignore file. And this is going to be used to ignore files that we don't want added to our local repository. So I'm going to do touch.gitignore. And if I open back up Sublime Text, you can see the .gitignore file here. So I'm going to add our virtual env folder. And then also I want to add any compiled Python and database files because I don't want them added to Heroku either. And we don't want our current database on Heroku because we're going to want to create a new database. Now that our gitignore file is created, we can create our new repository. So to do that, you first use a command called git init, and that initializes or creates our local repository. And then we add our files to staging, and then we use the command git commit plus a commit message, and that'll take those files and folders that are in staging and add them actually onto the repository. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's create our repository. So initialize an empty git repository. And let's go ahead and add all the files and folders, except for those listed within our .gitignore file. And then let's take those files that we just added to staging and put them into our repository. So it's a convention for our first commit to be called like initial commit, initial first commit, something like that. Go ahead and press enter. Okay, now we need to create a space on Heroku to house our app. And we can use the Heroku create command for this. And you can also specify an optional site name as well, which I recommend you to do so. Otherwise, your URL will include the name of the Heroku server housing the application plus a randomly assigned number, which is hard to remember. You can see here in the example what that could look like. So the server name or alias is start-window, and then 524 is just the randomly assigned number. And that actually could just be an incremented number. So 
I'm going to use Heroku Create, and I'm going to go ahead and use the name Flask-Intro for my app. So keep in mind that each app needs to have a unique name, so you'll have to pick a different name for your application. You can call it whatever you want, just get creative with it. So now we can already check our live app. So to do that, we can either type Heroku Open in the terminal, which will open a new window in Chrome and navigate to that URL, or we can just go right to Chrome and type in that URL. So let's just do Roku open. And obviously our app is not working yet because we have not deployed our application yet. So we are getting the default Roku error page back. So let's go ahead and deploy our app to Roku, which is also known as pushing because we're using Git for this. And we can use the following command, git push Heroku master. So that'll take the contents of our local repository and push it up to Heroku. And so the first time you push your app, it will take much longer to finish since Heroku has to install all dependencies from the requirements file. Cool, so now let's go ahead and add a dyno to our app. So we can do that. I'll explain just in a second what that is. So PS scale web equals one. Cool, so dynos are specific to Roku. They basically allow us to run processes. So in the above command, we are telling Heroku to run the web command, and that's the same web command from our proc file, and then we're using one dyno for that. So for more on dynos, check the Heroku documentation. Now we can run Heroku PS to check the currently running processes. And you can see that the web command is running with the command gunicorn, and it says it's up. So it looks like all is working. I've been using a lot of Heroku commands. If you have any questions on what a command will do or wondering like what other commands there are, you can just type in Heroku and this will take you directly to the help menu. Okay, so now that our app has been pushed and we know that it's running, let's go ahead and manually check it. So I'm gonna click refresh there and I'm getting a 500 internal server error. Well, let's go ahead and troubleshoot this. So let's start just by opening up the developer tools. And I'm going to go to resources. I'm going to see if I'm logged in. It looks like I am logged in because a session has been created. So let me just try logging out. OK, so that works. There's our application there. So let's go ahead and try and log in again. So admin, admin, there's our session cookie. So that is working. We are still getting an internal server error. So what else is happening on that main page? Well, we're querying the database, which we haven't even set up. Well, so let's actually try and recreate this error locally. Just going back to Sublime and opening up app.py. Let's just change the name of the database just for a second. Let me go ahead and save that. Now let's run the app locally. So Python app.py. So if we go to localhost 5000, we just log out. Now log in. So this is actually a 500 error. And if I had to guess, this is the exact same error that we are getting from Heroku. So we can solve this or just handle this a little bit more gracefully by adding an exception handler for this side effect. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the actual error here. And then let's go back to our app.py file. And let me make some changes here. So I'm going to move posts up to there. And so let me go ahead and put this into a try accept block. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to establish a database connection. And if that works, we're going to grab the posts like always. So if that works, if we're able to connect to the database, 
then the rest of these commands are going to execute. However, if we do get an exception, let's go ahead and flash a message back to the end user. So flash, and then let's just say you have no database. Go ahead and save that. So this is probably not the best way of handling it, and it's actually not the best way of handling it. Can you imagine going to Google, for example, and trying to search, but you get a message saying that the database is missing or that they have no database? That would be a bit scary. But we're not Google, of course, and we just want to get our Heroku app working. So we'll deal with the bigger issue in just a second. Now let's go ahead and test this out locally again. Go ahead and refresh. And so there is the actual message there. And we could actually format, the, format that a little bit better, but let's just go ahead and move on for time's sake. And now I'm gonna go ahead and kill the server here. So we wanna add our changes to the Git repository. So let's go ahead and do git add. And it adds them to the staging. And then let's go ahead and commit them to our repository. I'll just say, um, Try accept block add in. Now I'll go ahead and push up these changes to Heroku. So git push Heroku master. And I typed Heroku in wrong. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this out again. I'm going to go ahead and log out. So you can see the cookie is gone. Let's go ahead and log in. Cool, so cookie was added, there's our session, and you can see that the error message is there. So at least we're not getting that ugly internal server error message. So we still have the bigger issue of setting up our database on Heroku. We'll actually address this in the next video when we upgrade to SQL Alchemy. Finally, let's go ahead and run on our unit tests directly from Heroku. And to do that, we can use the Heroku run command. And with run, all we need to do is specify the command that we want to run afterwards. And this will execute one-off scripts. So we can do Heroku run, and then the command that we normally do to run our tests, tests.py. Okay, so one test failed, and this was expected. So it's the tests that posts show up. And if you remember right, what are we testing for in that instance? So we were testing for this specific post that was part of the response. And so since we don't have the database set up, that post is obviously not going to be there. But that's all right. We need to refactor this test anyway, which we will do in the next video. So to summarize, in this video, we set up all the requirements for Roku and then deployed our application. We found a bug and then troubleshooted it and slapped basically a temporary Band-Aid on it just to get our application working. And next time, we're going to go ahead and migrate to SQL Alchemy for better database management, get our database set up and working not only locally, but on Roku as well. And then we're going to refactor this failing test. All right, leave comments or questions below, and I will see you next time.